Hey everybody, JJ here. It is Bull to the Bust. It is Tuesday, August 25th, 2020. Just wanted to bring you some news, some analysis today on where we stand in the economy. Now, first of all, this picture right here, I think that's supposed to be Jay Powell with the US States, United States Treasury check there blown into a bubble. And I wanted to put this up here because essentially that's where we're at. We're living in a big, fat, ugly bubble, which has been in a bubble for many, many years and many Americans are suffering under inflation right now. Now when I say inflation, I don't mean the money supply because money supply is being inflated, but some people mistake the money inflation or money being printed or created. Uh, they mistake that for actual inflation that consumers have to pay for. So yes, money printing can create inflation, but not always. For example, the price of oil crashed earlier this year not because the dollar's value gained that much strength, but because of the laws of supply and demand. And also we had a lot of speculators that were freaking out and selling contracts. But what happens is with excessive money printing, it can create a big surge on the demand side because as more people get money to spend, then they go up and, and they go out and bid up prices. You can see it in the housing market, the easier it is to get loans and easy money the higher prices go because people are throwing more money at less and less items to purchase or in the case of homes you have little inventory but a lot of money a lot of lending happening and we saw that at the end of the second quarter uh, mortgage debt took another increase all categories of debt actually took an increase the only category of debt that didn't increase in the second quarter 2020 was credit card debt and we talked about that a few episodes ago credit card debt declined for many reasons one is so many places are shut down, people are not traveling, so therefore they can't waste money on vacations, nightclubs, bars, restaurants. Uh, of course, some states are open, others are more closed, like California. Uh, you also had many people pulling money out of their 401k since the penalty was waived. You actually still have to pay the interest, is what they're saying now, but a lot of people chose to pay down the credit card debt and take money out of their 401k to do that. Uh, sorry, I'm just fighting off, uh, fighting off a hiccup here. All right, so debt climbed, mortgage debt climbed. The only category that didn't go up was credit card debt. Also, millions of people don't have to pay their mortgage and their rents right now, so that's another factor. People may be choosing to use the extra money that they're not paying in, in their rent or their mortgage and pay down credit cards. Okay, now this is uncharted territory. No one knows where this is gonna end, when it's gonna end, and how bad it's gonna be. But well, let's take a look at some recent news here that might give us some indicators on where we are headed. A recent article right here out of CNBC, American Airlines is cutting 19,000 jobs when the federal aid expires in October. So you see, this is just a small example of a big, big problem. A lot of the jobs that exist today are because of debt, because of government intervention, because of federal aid, right? Debt, spending, and lending creates an economic boom or at least the illusion of a boom as people have money to spend money they don't have borrowing money mortgages credit cards car loans student loans it creates jobs because you create demand and therefore you need more people unless it's a fully automated uh, production factory but even then you have to have humans that program the robots and fix and repair things but this economic boom this bubble gives the illusion of a great economy now we see the current administration out there and if you've been watching the uh, the DNC and the RNC conventions especially on the um, RNC side you see a lot of bragging about how the economy was the greatest ever up until the shutdown and then now they have an excuse for uh, the decline and the crash and the recession and the job losses but of course, they're going to say that the economy was the greatest ever, and I think about 99.9% .9 of the people believe that in this country, and it's pretty sad. Uh, I think most of us here on this channel are pretty aware that this was a false economic boom, that it was a bubble. It was lending, spending, and pretending that the economy was good. But as uh, Peter Schiff said here recently, the Fed is trying to print to replace the economy. They think money printing is going to replace an actual good economy. And this is an example right here. So American Airlines is saying, hey, if you don't give us more aids, there goes 19 uh, aid. <laughs> aid, let me take an S off that. You don't want to give anybody aids. Uh, if they don't get more aid, 19,000 jobs are gone. 
and that's just a small example it's a lot bigger and a lot worse than just 19,000 jobs of course as we see the Fed stepping in to buy commercial debt uh, the Fed is on a buying spree as the buyer and lender of last resort and we're getting close to the end game I don't know how close a week a month six months nobody knows uh, but we need to keep preparing let's look at some other news here today consumer confidence plunges to six-year low this is out of the hill uh, well my question is why is it just now plunging because things have been looking bad for a while of course the shutdown that brought in a whole new level of uh, bearishness and job losses but this whole thing is based on a debt binge so the reason I don't know why consumers were confident before this All right let me put that another way I guess if you think that the government's always gonna create unlimited stimulus for the economy for the markets um, the Fed is gonna give banks endless money to loan out even though technically the banks do not have the money in reserves I guess if you think that's gonna go on forever that could give you some confidence but like anything it comes to an end and when it comes to an end it's gonna be real scary and real dangerous in this country we already see pockets of chaos in this country imagine how much worse it's gonna be is it gonna be ten times worse a hundred times worse once people have no food they're starving they're desperate um, they get kicked out of their home they're evicted they have no place to live and they're hungry everything combined is gonna be a disaster it's gonna be a nightmare uh, we need to prepare well, let's take a look at a couple uh, recent tweets here. Um, this is Liz Ann Saunders on Twitter. She's the chief investment strategist for Charles Schwab, and she tweeted out the following. Mortgage delinquencies have spiked, but foreclosures remain low, courtesy of moratoriums. Divergence cannot last indefinitely. Exactly when this ends, it's going to be a disaster. So here's foreclosures, really low, because there's moratoriums. Uh, the lowest in about 20 years actually but let's go back to our other picture here this is the actual delinquencies we are approaching the peak of the financial crisis and we're not even out of the woods yet we're just getting into the woods and the further you get into the woods the darker it gets and what's gonna be lurking for us in the darkest part in the deepest part of these woods alright and again I don't think anything is going to be allowed to collapse here before November and I'm not sure how much after November uh, this is gonna last and I always say in this channel prepare for the worst if they were to let this collapse we are talking Mad Max we're talking third world country in a matter of days uh, Peter Schiff laid out this tweet here recently uh, quote the Fed contends that low inflation results from a weak economy even if that were true it stands logic on its head to claim the reverse is also true the Fed's claim that higher inflation will result in a stronger economy is the same as claiming that wet sidewalks will cause rain. End of the tweet. So what the Fed is doing here is they're saying that inflation is an indicator of a good economy. So therefore, causing inflation with low rates, easy money, uh, stimulus bailouts, the whole nine yards, they're saying that causing inflation is going to create a good economy that doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, that's like saying what Peter says here. That that's like saying wet sidewalks cause rain so you're blaming or you're putting the effect of something as the cause right the sidewalk being what doesn't cause the rain it's the rain that causes the wet sidewalk they're at the Fed they have it completely backwards either they're boneheads uh, and idiots or they're just acting like idiots so they can get away with more I think it's the second part I think it's the latter of those two an example of that would be if someone comes up and kicks you you turn around you're upset you're gonna kick them back but then you find out they're they're crazy you know maybe they're a meth head or they're, they're freaking out on some sort of a drug you know like okay uh, yeah they kicked me but uh, I'm not gonna hit them back because they're they're crazy they've got enough problems without me hitting them back so could be what the feds doing you let me know guys thanks for watching this report a quick one today will be back tomorrow and I missed yesterday we've got back to school system problems uh, zoom outages all kinds of issues uh, my household's chaos right now but thanks everybody for your support appreciate you being here uh, we just did another upload to patreon I'm gonna put the link down here and you'll see it if you look at the bottom here uh, on the screen right now and find me over there if you want to get deeper into the structural system uh, the flaws that are causing all this mess right now um, it's a lot bigger than we could talk about here but you support me over there and you get additional content and a little bit of a more up-close 
um, discussion with me there. You can ask me questions too over at uh, Patreon. Thanks everybody for being here. Hope you're well. Stay prepared. Bye.